medical dilemma. Welcome back to Medical Dilemma. Uh, joining me in this segment of the show are my co-hosts. First of all, we have Dr. Teresita Sanchez, medical legal consultant. Hi, hello. Hello, Dr. Nice to see you again. <laughs> yes, and of course, uh, we have Father Jerry Manlangit, uh, professor of bioethics from the Order of Preachers. Hi. Okay. Hello, Sorry. Father. Nice to be here. Thank you. And of course, we have Attorney Sara Subitan of the Subitan Law Office. Hi, sir. Hello. Okay, now let's, uh, let's pick up from the last uh, point of uh, Dr. Paddu regarding how a healthcare professional is supposed to proceed once a clear case or a suspected case of child abuse is uh, discovered. Dr. Uh, you know, there is really a law that says that uh, those people in the emergency room who suspects a victim of child abuse should really report it. And mm -hmm. they have to report it either to the nearest government institution or to the DSWD or maybe where they have a woman or child death no? in, among, in the police quarters. No? They have to report whether now uh, the nice thing about it is that there is no attachment of any criminal, civil or even any administrative liability mm -hmm. should it be found out that they made a wrong diagnosis or they feel that nakamali sila hindi pala victim of child abuse in Plata. But it is the other way around. If they don't report, they can be charged as much as 2,000 pesos under the law. 2,000 pesos? Yes, only. <laughs> I see. Sad to say. The doctor, are you? The doctor yes. Can be fined. Can be fined. For, uh, uh, how do you for not reporting. For not reporting. But actually, if they, it's a wrongful report, uh, as they, have no they have no liability at all. Okay, so this has to be reported in good faith. Yes, and it must be in writing. You so therefore, there must be so some sort of uh, process or criteria set that well, has to be followed. Yeah, uh, depending upon their findings. Mm -hmm. you know, they see a, a child and then dami sugat physically, and then you suspect, and somebody even told you na, I don't, this was a co caused by the lolo or whatever, even the father, the suspect. Mm -hmm. no? So they have to do that. In good faith, they can, and they should report. Okay. But and it's not always done, uh, Sunny. Not always done. Okay, so this mandatory reporting, mm -hmm. does it waive the uh, absolutely the invasion of privacy obligation or ethical standard? Father Jerry? Uh, it does not. Uh, first of all, legally, well, uh, Thomas Ugitan would explain this later. But, uh, well, because there is a a very serious obligation on the part of the healthcare professionals mm -hmm. to, uh, well, to report it to the uh, government agencies so that, uh, well, it's always for in, in favor of the child. So, li uh, uh, ethically, there is none as far as bioethics, bioethics is concerned. In fact, it is an obligation. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, uh, the patient or, or maybe the accused uh, party cannot get back at the, the doctor or the healthcare professional uh, and accuse that healthcare professional of invading privacy or but, uh, breaching privacy it's rights. In favor of the child. Mm -hmm. So if it is in favor of the child, why should uh, even the healthcare professional be accused of, well, uh, uh, all this uh, violating privacy and besides, for the sake of the yeah. child. Yeah. And besides, there is such a law already, so <coughs> we have to follow the law, right? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, the policy of the law is always the uh, what is it, um, the paramount interest of the child. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's always for the welfare or the well-being of the child, then if it's, like for example, in a, a case of child abuse, uh, if the perpetrator is a parent or a guardian, then the it would be um, in the child's interest to separate him or her or put, take him away from um, that person who inflicted uh, the wounds. I, that's how I think the, the law would uh, take into effect when it comes to uh, that situation. So let me just make this very clear. The doctor has absolute right to inquire about any aspect of the victim's life or mm -hmm. family? Yes, I would think that will fall into the um, doctor-patient uh, mm -hmm. privilege as well. And it is, because mga, mga Filipinos, we don't disclose everything to our doctor. Sometimes there's yes, that yes. factor of nakakahiya or you, you just don't feel like disclosing everything to your doctor. But 
actually everything that is said to your doctor <coughs> is in, in the nature of I, I would think confession mm -hmm. di ba, father yeah. it is protected by the um, pri the privacy uh, like they say it is treated the same as when you're confessing your sins to but the you priest know, but you know from experience even mm -hmm. in the emergency room no there's a tendency from the for these people to lie to sort of invent uh, the situation what happened to the child oh nahulog lang na dapa ganon something like that so we have to well the fact is that you, that you don't word. you don't uh, go to the details of the case mm -hmm. if there is only a suspicion for that matter mm -hmm. then the doctor must have an obligation to uh, to report, report to still. government oh, oh. agencies yes you Even don't have to go to the details uh -huh. so it's up for the well the government ag agencies to investigate and let's see what happens there so mm -hmm. it okay. should not well the doctors should not be afraid but what what if the uh, the abused child or members of the family of the abused child refuse to cooperate in uh, the investigation of the doctor. Uh, does the state or does any other body have uh, the right to intervene? This is now a public issue. It's not only just something private upon the family. It's now a public issue. Therefore, you can do something about it and then you can report it. It is a public matter now. Mm -hmm. so Who are uh, authorized or? Uh, it, the uh, no, health professionals now. Mm -hmm. Aside so from health professionals, are there other uh, entities that are allowed by law to report the case? Yeah. I, uh, under the law, even if the parents do not want to report, there are many people who can do the reporting for them. Mm -hmm. They can be relatives, they can be the barangay chairman, and they can be three concerned citizens in the locality where the abuse right. happened. And uh, as father said, it's all about suspicion. Even if it's not yet proven, there are signs that usually doctors will look at. And mm -hmm. then if, if like, like uh, Doctora said, sometimes they won't tell you the truth. But if the story does not match the physical injuries, mm -hmm. then the doctor will start suspecting that it might be a case of child abuse. And once reported to the DSWD, the DSWD has certain duties, like going to the house, uh, conducting a house visit, and as uh, attorney said, removing the child if it's detrimental for the child to remain in the home. I'd like yes, to ask uh, Dr. Ivy here, mm -hmm. because you're also, like Dr. Tess, a lawyer and a doctor, what sorts of injuries will um, initiate or trigger that line of questioning from the doctor to suspect that it is a child abuse case? Okay, for, for children, if they have injuries to the nose, mouth, and the ears, and the head, so that's one of the clues. You, you look more into it if it's uh, compatible with, with what they said. If there's a fracture in a child and the child is not yet walking, if there are uh, varying stages of healing of fractures or bruises, the bruising, different colors, it means it was inflicted at different times of uh, mm -hmm. the day. Uh, even burns, there are, there are patterns. So for burns that are a uh, product of child abuse, usually you will see immersion burns meaning delineated it will be different from accidental burns like for example a hot coffee was accidentally thrown there will be no pattern but for inflicted burns there will be patterns cigarette burns small uh, small uh, contusions and burns on the hand so there are signs and the doctors are usually trained to do this in addition uh, the cpu the child protection unit of pgh even conducts trainings for uh, practitioners to be able to detect child abuse i see now what about Parental rights uh, in cases of child abuse, uh, are they automatically waived by law uh, if uh, a parent is accused or suspected of child abuse? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, being a lawyer, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I think, you know, uh, ang tina, of course, under the seven Republic Act 7610, uh, they're still included, no? It yeah. doesn't differentiate between whether you're a parent or a stranger or a relative or a friend or mm -hmm. what. So they are covered more or less. However, th with regards to corporal punishment, usually it is unusual and cruel punishment, I think, that is what that will really uh, anger the state, no? Sometimes they can uh, excuse themselves and say, no, I was just uh, trying to teach the child a lesson, but mm -hmm. sometimes this, would not, this should not be if it's too not proportional to what has been done or committed by the child. What standards do we have to, uh, you know, separate unusual, 
corporal punishment with the usual corporal punishment? Uh, first of all, uh, let me clear my stand. Mm -hmm. no? Definitely any form of injury or infliction of injury on a child would be mm -hmm. a no-no really in our society, definitely. But sometimes we give them little, you know, a little consideration because of that. So I suppose mm -hmm. it's something that would really cause disability, would maim the child forever for life or cause uh, infliction of injuries uh, that are really that makes you you know it uh, it maims them psychologically it gives them uh, what you call that uh, father what you call that yung parang uh, what you call that loss of self esteem yeah. there are sometimes like that mm. um. I, ako different on stand ko i'm actually yes, pro so palo mm -hmm. <laughs> pro, pro palo. I mean, uh, as you said, uh, if it is a cruel and unusual corporal punishment, and then it is disallowed. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes, and I think I I grew up also. Na I got um, I got palo. You know, mm -hmm. when when I misbehaved or I I decided I I want to stop studying. I don't want to do homework anymore. Um, you you receive uh, corporal punishment in order to correct the behavior. I mean, to to correct your um, misconceptions about life because you're growing up. So mm -hmm. sometimes uh, it's uh, for me it's necessary. You know, it's in, it's part of the Filipino psyche. Although pag sumobra, as you said, if it becomes cruel and unusual, there will be signs. Sabi nga ni Doctora IV, mm -hmm. like yung mga yung mga injury to the mouth. Because if it's just an accident, if you fell from the swing, it's a different kind of injury. Eh. Yes. May sugat, di ba? But if uh, as she said, it's very interesting. Pag yung burns or uh, various fractures in varying degrees of healing, it means it's being inflicted on a regular basis. Yeah. So these okay. are telltale signs that are different from oh, pinalo ako ng nanay ko dahil ayoko na mag-aral. Well, if, kasi ang bata, if you don't correct them growing up, if you let them be, choose what they want, they, they can, you know, they can grow up with the wrong values or they can be, they can easily just give up on life, etc. It, mm -hmm. it will affect their... Um, their behavior, their their belief in life, no. So, ako kaya sabi ko pro palo. Ako it's a way of disciplining, but it shouldn't go beyond. But as I said, doctor, ano, anything that in, that will maim the child, of course, I think there's no argument there. It cannot, uh, it cannot happen. <laughs> You yes, know, what psychologists uh, told us, no, mm -hmm. between being very liberal in your treatment of your child and very strict, they more or less want to side with the liberal. You le let the child grow up the way he should grow up. Because if it is too strict, really, there are some psychological effects on the child. For one thing, diba? she would feel unwanted, mm -hmm. or unwanted or neglected or what. And Father, Father what do you think? Of course, uh, we have always to avoid extremes. You know, being li very liberal and very strict, no? Yeah. These are all extremes. Mm -hmm. We have to, uh, well, uh, to close the gap a little bit so that they will be able to know that mm -hmm. they are being, uh, she called this, they are not punished, they are disciplined. There is a, di there yeah, is a I distinction agree. between punishing and disciplining. Mm -hmm. I agree, Patrick, yeah, that's uh, right. Discipline mm -hmm. comes from the word disciple. Oh, when you are disciplining the child, it means you want the child to follow because the mm -hmm. disciple is a follower. Mm -hmm. But to punish is to inflict pain for the sake of inflicting pain. Disciplining is the word, not punishing. So in, in that case, you, will, you don't have to be liberal. You don't have mm -hmm. to be conservative or very strict for that matter. Just discipline the child. As the Bible would even say, discipline the child mm -hmm. and you will be happy when you grow old. I see. Now, aside from uh, corporal punishment, there is another uh, form of child abuse that also is uh, very difficult to, uh, to interpret. This is the, the issue of bullying. What do we consider real bullying? <laughs> well, uh, bullying, the, we have a law, the, the Anti-Bullying Act, but actually the Anti-Bullying Act, our law, only covers the situation in schools. But we must understand yes. That bullying can happen, outside can happen anywhere right. and outside right. and is actually, as, as we were discussing a while ago, a form mm -hmm. of child abuse. Mm -hmm. But uh, our law covers specifically the schools and the duties of the schools, the schools to try and stop bullying. Right. So uh, bullying is anything that will uh, be detrimental to the child, which includes hitting, psychological, mm -hmm. use of the internet to uh, malign a person, uh, the social media to mm -hmm. create false rumors. So these are all forms of bullying. Anything <coughs> that will uh, make the child feel uh, uneasy and threatened, usually. Those so are a, a classmate that
that keeps on teasing another student would or can be accused of bullying? Yes, I think so. I think the the real problem that's why there was there was a need to enact the law is that oftentimes we just look away. Sometimes when our when our for moms for kids who come home and complain about a certain classmate mm -hmm. uh, who keeps teasing them, we just ignore it because we think it's just part of a childhood game. But mm -hmm. uh, what the the studies show is that bullying has a detrimental effect on the psychological health of a child. In fact, when you look at the experience of other countries. Uh, I haven't read much here about uh, that, but in other yes, countries, yes. bullying has led to suicides. Bullying has led to kids going to school with guns and, and killing people. So we just don't realize how very difficult it is for the child because we are looking at it from a different perspective. But anything that makes the child feel threatened, that's bullying. Mm -hmm. But those, those consequences, you know, like committing suicide or bringing guns to school, uh, to my mind, those consequences seem to be more of results of the lack of supporting uh, factors to the child and not a direct result of you know, acts like teasing a classmate in school. Uh, of course, there are many factors that will put, push a child to a breaking point. But it does not mean that the bullying is not an important contributing factor. Because uh, often this child feel hopeless to the point that sometimes they don't want to go to school. So actually, those are signs to watch out for in, in a child. If suddenly there's a change in their behavior and they don't want to go to school anymore, mm -hmm. what would push a child to change? What environment? Oh. I see. Well, we certainly have a very <laughs> engaging discussion, but uh, I, I think it's time to pause for another commercial break. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> 